Now let's turn to piping systems. Are you sure you inspect these pipes every day? Yes, sir. I'm here every day, so I would know if there was an issue with my pipes. Are, are you sure? I, I see like a leak start. What did you have here, sir? I don't, I don't know if you're being completely honest with me. Sir, there, there's nothing to see here. Let's just move on to the next phase, sir. For this discussion, piping systems will include all installed valve, pumps, regulators, etc. Piping systems occur in almost every space on the ship, whether it's carrying cooling water to electronics equipment, drinking water to scuttlebutts, or fuel to main engines or boilers. Regardless, a properly operating system containing fluids should not have any leaks. Leaks are the most common form of problem with a piping system and are obvious because of wet spots or soaked lagging. Trace every wet spot you see to its source and note it. Poor or cracked welds, improperly made up flanges, leaking gaskets or packing, pinholes from corrosion or piping, or piping damage are all possible sources of leaks. This is a great place to test your CSI abilities. The fluid in the system, gasoline, water, etc., the operating pressure, the extent of the leak, and the service involved, and the space involved, will all contribute to your estimate of the seriousness of any leak that you find. Packing gland leaks are normally not more than several drops per minute. Stainless steel is not a material that should be exposed to salt water in such areas as the bilge. Copper nickel is much more resistant and is often used in these spaces. Steel fasteners used in salt water applications will corrode and fail if not replaced. A small magnet can be used to identify steel fasteners where they don't belong. Piping will develop leaks in areas of wells, adjacent to elbows, bends, and low points in the system or any spot where thinning might be expected to occur. Boiler fuel oil piping on the fronts of boilers, surface blow, bottom blow piping are particular examples. Piping flanges that are joined should be in parallel planes and the fasteners should be of equal length and have equal amounts of threads projecting past the end of the nuts wherever the space permits. All nuts should have at least one thread projecting past the top. Pipes should be supported in pipe hangers where piping runs involve several feet of unsupported pipe. Piping can be stressed by being forced into improperly located pipe hangers. Piping noted outside of pipe hangers should not require a significant effort to reposition. If it does, it should be reworked or the pipe hanger removed if it is for small diameter piping. Major steam lines and other large diameter piping should be fit to the pipe hangers. Valves should all be marked to show their system and the direction of flow through the valve. Major valves should have a system identification number and should be included on the system operating diagram. A properly maintained valve will be clean and preserved. It will have a valve operator or handle attached. Its stem will be clean and straight, and there will not be any tool marks on it. The valve bonnet will be tight and level. There will not be any leakage. Studs and bolts in the bonnet and flanges should be equal in length, fit to the stud or bolt holes, and if properly made up, should show the same number of threads above the nut. At least one thread should project past the top of any nut. Cutout and isolation valve should be either fully open or fully closed. Regulators can be of several types. They should be inspected just like valves. There should be nothing restricting the movement of a regulator. Steam traps can be found in various places throughout the ship. They should be clean and not leaking. Remote operating rods and mechanisms for all valves and regulators are essential for both damage control and effective system operation. You should not see any disconnected remote operators that are not logged out of commission. Universal joints, gearboxes, and other parts of the operating mechanism should be free and lubricated. Label plates at the remote valve wheel should identify the valve and system and the direction to open and close the valve. When looking at piping, look for flow arrows, system labels, damage control fittings, evidence of valve maintenance or leaks, verdigris and salt, and proper pipe hangers.